question. Great, okay. Um, so, uh, contrast enhanced mammography. I just owe a lot of these slides to uh, Maxine Jockelson, who's um, uh, there and who is one of my colleagues. Um, this is our uh, growth that we've seen with breast MR. So we're doing a lot of high-risk screening. As you can see here on the slide, over the years, it's really gone more from extent of disease evaluation to high-risk screening. So, so that said, um, we know that um, MR is far superior, I, and I really have to apologize, I'm running like a, a sorry about this. Uh, uh, that MR is uh, superior to mammography um, as the overall sensitivity of mammography is, uh, varies depending on breast density. We know that for high-risk screening, MR is certainly the test of choice. I think numerous trials have shown us that MR is superior to mammography and even screening ultrasound when that was um, included in the trials. And that's led to many countries recommending annual MR for high-risk women. Uh, the United States, uh, Germany recommends, um, and also um, uh, throughout the world. But that said, we have these recommendations in place. Very few women really are getting screened who need it. Um, so many high-risk women don't get screened with MR. Um, outside academic practices um, or even practices, even practices that do a lot of um, preoperative MR aren't doing a lot of high-risk screening. Um, and so I think, you know, it's very complicated to figure out why that is. Um, it's often hard to figure out who is 20% or greater risk. Um, a lot of the referring physicians really don't understand the recommendations. And um, it's also, I think, MR is seen as too difficult to order for physicians. You know, you have to schedule it in the second week of the cycle. Um, it's expensive. Um, it's a long exam. Um, currently, many of these exams are 30 minutes, uh, which is a long screening exam. And then there's this, um, this mantra, I think, that's, uh, that's basically said in the same breath. Anyone, anyone says breast MR, there's always too many false positives in that same uh, sentence. Um, so there's a fear of getting unnecessary biopsies. And there's been publications, Wendy Berg on her Akron 6666 trial that you just saw, um, when they did that follow-up MR after three years of screening, she found that um, that only 60% um, of women agreed to participate in having uh, an MRI examination. And the various reasons were claustrophobia, too expensive, um, uncertain about the examination. So I think MR has a real problem. And um, it has a, it's almost like it's got a sign on its back. It, you know, I feel like it's a technology that it's very high tech. And it's almost like there's a kick me sign on the back of uh, MR. Um, it, it's not easily, uh, easily adaptable. Now, so MR is useful um, in breast imaging because really, honestly, all we're looking at is blood flow. And so if we had another technology that could assess blood flow, why wouldn't we use it? Um, and if it's a technology that's easier to use, it's more ubiquitous than um, MR, it seems like it would make sense to use it. So we have a, such a technology. We have a technology, it's called Contrast Enhanced Mammography, and it's been around for a while. And the first paper that came out that published on it came from the Toronto group. And what they did is very similar to MR. They took um, two pictures, uh, to mammograms, and they subtracted to get the iodine image. And then along came John Lewin, who's, who's, who's here, um, and he did a different thing. He actually used the, um, uh, the basically here, the iodine um, peak, and it has a K edge at about 33 um, KVs. And so what he said is, why don't we take two exposures, one below that, one above that, subtract that, and we're gonna get the K edge of iodine, and it's only gonna be an iodine image. And these are the type of images that you can generate. So you have a high energy, you have a low energy, you subtract them, and you get the iodine image. So much easier to see this cancer up here than on this, basically the low energy is very similar to a uh, digital mammogram. So this is very similar looking to um, MR, right? It looks pretty good. Here's another example. Where's the cancer here? 
easy to see speculations with contrast um, on this examination here. So um, the group in um, Paris uh, uh, has, um, uh, oh sorry, these are German publications very early on from Charité and um, that looked at uh, this technology and my, my impression in talking to uh, at least uh, Ulrich is that they thought it was okay but basically back at that time the technology wasn't so great that you could um, actually see these uh, lesions um, reproducibly. And then um, along came Clarisse uh, Germain from Paris, France, and she published um, uh, a couple of papers using the GE system, which is what we have in place. And she compared unilateral um, contrast to mammography, and she found that um, contrast um, mammography and mammography were better than um, mammography alone in detecting um, cancers and um, better than a trend for mammography and ultrasound. And this was published in 2011. So on the basis of that, we got a system and we thought, let's look at this. And um, we, we, first thing we wanted to do was see, can this be done bilaterally? Can we do it like we do a screening mammogram? So, uh, so we, we tried to demonstrate feasibility and optimization for bilateral. And then we wanted to compare um, MR and um, CEDM. Uh, uh, in the preoperative setting. So, you know, when we were going to be doing a preoperative MR to assess for extended disease, we wanted to do a CESMC if it was able to detect the same amount of disease as MR. And we wanted to compare the false positives. Um, so we looked for women who were over 21, um, they had both breasts, no implants, they weren't pregnant or lactating, no renal failure, because we are injecting Omnipake um, in these patients. Um, and they had their MR within 30 days. So the risks of um, CESM are that they have, um, you're gonna be injecting contrast, like with CT scans, the same um, dose, and there is a slight increase in radiation dose because you're doing those two exposures, and it's basically equivalent to one extra image um, of uh, the breast. This is just a regular room. You can adapt a regular mammogram unit. And this is our system here, and, um, and it's easy to perform. The technologists can do it. It takes actually not a few minutes extra than the normal exposure, and there's really no significant workflow changes. So what we were able to show is feasibility. Uh, the first 10 patients, we were able to do um, bilateral examinations. We found, and I'm on, wow, I'm on a fast. Um, are you able to take off auto advance? Uh, are you, can you take off auto advance? I think, okay, thanks. Um, so we've, we found by trial and error that imaging should begin three minutes after you give the contrast injection. You need to wait till the contrast gets to the breast. Um, and um, we, you still have to compress the breast to expose uh, the breast. And we found that the ordering of how you image did not make any difference at all. Uh, and that tumor enhancement was present for at least 10 minutes after contrast. So the contrast uptake to us did not seem similar to the contrast uptake in MR. And I'm not really sure why that is, but the contrast takes up and it stays around and it, seemed, it doesn't seem to um, um, uh, wash out of the lesion like with MR. Um, and we found that you could do a CC, uh, you know, two CCs first, and then you can go on to the MLO and you can um, get a very good assessment. And this is an example, very dense breast. And I don't know that you would pick this up, but this is where the cancer is here on the mammogram. And this is MR, you can see the MR very easily. And this is a contrast enhanced mammogram. Now these are not pretty images, this is a very, uh, first um, prototype that they had, so there was a lot of edge enhancement, which has now since been removed, but you can see the contrast uptake in the cancer. So um, the first, uh, we, we, we looked at patient population, I'm just gonna give you a first, um, our first grouping, and I'm on auto advance, I apologize. Um, so, so this was, um, we looked at a very, most of them were heterogeneous or dense breasts, about 50 years old. Most of them were invasive ductal, but we did have two invasive lobulars. And this is what was so interesting. And I think we were, I was shocked that the results were as good as this, because I thought there was no way this technology can beat MR. 
Um, but we were able to see all cancers um, in both modalities. Um, the additional um, ipsy lateral cancers, um, there were more seen on MR than there were on the contrast. Um, but there were also more false positives um, than on the contrast. And in contralateral cancers, we had no contralateral cancers, but um, we had three false positives on MR compared to um, the CEDM. So it appeared to us that CEDM was able to pick up most of the cancers with decreasing the false positives. Now there were two false negatives, um, single with each technique, contrast, um, um, missed an infiltrating lobular cancer, and MR missed an infiltrating ductal cancer, probably due to the fact that there was a lot of background parenchymal enhancement um, on MR. So the sensitivity, um, the accuracy of detection of cancer was the same um, with both modalities, with um, MR and CEDM. Uh, sensitivity of lesion detection, all of the cancers a little bit higher with MR because it picked up more ipsilateral um, cancers, but you know, you can argue is that important, but the specificity was a lot higher, meaning there were few uh, false positives with CEDM. And this is the um, publication that I can refer you to. This is the uh, full data set um, that was published um, in radiology. Um, so these are just some um, cases of um, uh, where CEDM can help you out. Very dense breasts. Here is the image. You can see the image is a little bit improved since the ones I showed you before. But um, here is the ca obvious cancer. And this is what it looked like on MR. So very similar looking. Another example, a woman who had nipple inversion with pain, negative mammogram, and she, on ultrasound there was a mass that was biopsied in its invasive ductal. You can see the mammogram, very dense. I think there's a clip in there somewhere. But here's, yeah, there's the clip. Um, here's the CEDM right here. You can see there's enhancement all down here and right here. Um, so it looks like there's quite a lot of extended disease, and here's the MR. You can see in the same area um, the enhancement. Um, this is just the contralateral side where nothing was going on. So she had extensive DCIS, invasive cancer, um, and needed a mastectomy. Another example where a, screen, a negative mammogram screening ultrasound showed a small invasive ductal cancer. Here's the mammogram now after the biopsy um, where the screening mammogram picked up the invasive cancer with the marker. And here is the MR. Here is the screen detected invasive ductal cancer on MR. And MR picked up a second area a little bit away uh, that looks suspicious. And here's the CEDM, here's the cancer, and then um, we weren't really sure is that really enhancement that correlated to the MR or not. Um, here it is here, you can't really see it. Here's the um, cancer. Um, and th these are the newer images um, that I'm showing you with the algorithm, the reconstruction algorithm, where you can see these areas a lot better. Um, so this is sort of the quality of the um, exam that we currently have. And this is how you can see the cancer here. And you could question maybe there's a second thing. The person reading this exam did not think that there was anything else um, in addition to this cancer. So it was read as being negative. Um, on MR, that second lesion um, turned out to be DCIS. So um, here, this probably correlates to the MR um, area um, that is right here. Very subtle finding. Um, and there was um, less than one millimeter of invasive cancer associated with that area. So the improve, there's been a lot of improvements, as you can see, to the uh, technology, a lot of um, improvements to the image quality. Um, you can do the exam fast, the KV switching is faster, the motion artifacts are lower. Uh, and these are kind of the quality of images that you get these days. You can see nipple retraction in this patient, mammogram very difficult to image, and here you can see multifocal cancer extending down to the, um, the nipple. Another case, more um, uh, um, multifocal cancer here in this breast where you don't see it very well in, on mammography. Um, and same here. 
uh, you can see this area. So the image, images are looking good. And so I think that um, my impression is this, this is really a potential uh, replacement to MR. Um, we know in the screening, at least in um, the pre-op setting, it approximates MR and its ability to detect cancer. It's not as sensitive um, in staging, um, but it may not be clinically important. I mean, we may be, it may not pick up every uh, um, little tiny um, area of DCIS, but we'll talk about that, um, is that really important? And um, the specificity is better than MR. We're not, we don't, we're not plagued by all these false positive exams. So what we're doing now, um, we're, we're, we, we, we've done the preoperative comparison, and now we're trying to do a comparison in the high-risk setting. So we're doing a high-risk um, uh, comparison of MR versus um, uh, CDM. And um, so we need to um, define its role further. The advantages are it's very cheap, it's available, anyone can do it, um, specificity is improved, and the training and maintenance is a lot easier than MR. And I thank you for your attention. Thank you.